Hi, my name is Andy. This is the Allen Unplug Presents 10 Questions. I'm here with cellist and singer Brian Kidd. He is scheduled to play an Emmaus Snowblast event at King Coffee Friday, February 2nd. Show starts at 8 p.m. We're so glad you could come by. Good to be here. Yeah. Um, so, um, for you, what is the driving force behind you that makes you write music? Well, certainly my emotions. My emotions are all of our emotions drive a lot of things, but um, yeah, sometimes it's the best form of, of therapy, self therapy, if you will. You can think about, get your thoughts out. You can kind of, you know, if you write a song, you have a structure of a song, you kind of mesh your right and your left brain together, and you can make something that people can enjoy. Sounds good. So, yeah. Okay. That's good. Um, what are some of the main themes in your music? Well, definitely, I would say, a lot of my old music, the driving theme was being an individual and being yourself. And being true to yourself and not listening to those around you. Which is amazing because at the time, at that time in my life, <laughs> I really didn't think for myself much. I, I really did listen to a lot of, of those around me. So, But it's good. Looking back, I, I, I always knew that, that I wanted to think for myself. So yeah. So that was, that was the recurring theme. And of course, you know, I have the usual cookie cutter love song here and there Yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, can you describe your sound? Um, and is it still evolving or are you happy with it? Well, I play electric cello and I play regular guitar. I've been in rock bands and stuff throughout the years, but uh, right now you can just say, I mean, I just play the cello and I sing at the same time. So if you want, if you if you will, I, I I can't think of an artist off the top of my head that 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 would that just plays like a stringed instrument and sings, but you know, just general regular singer songwriter stuff when I'm playing my guitar, like Jack Johnson ish type of thing. Yeah. But yeah. As far as the cello, it's just a cello and me singing on top of it. I, I apologize, I can't really describe it better than that. You know, no, that's, check a great, it out. that's a very great um, description, actually. Um, so also, how did you get into music? So, I remember when I was really little, I, I used to like make like, like rap rubber bands around shoe boxes and things. And just and uh, I used to pluck the, 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 the banister and it would be like a doom, doom, doom. And I was like, wow, that's so weird. It's like a string instrument made out of wood. And I would make these little shoebox guitars, and, and then um, I saw Yo-Yo Ma, the really famous cellist on uh, Mr. Mm, Rogers, yeah. when I was like, I don't know, six or seven. But I didn't really, I didn't realize that that, that, it, that that instrument spoke to me that, at that point. And then it was introduced to me in third grade when I was nine, and I had an opportunity, so I went home and I asked my parents to play it, and they, thankfully to them, they allowed me to play it, and uh, I've been with it ever since. Good. Um, how did you, uh, I mean, did you start on the cello or the guitar, or what was your first instrument? I started on the cello when I was nine, and I never ever saw myself playing the guitar. It was kind of weird. I always thought that, like, guitar players were, like, those, those, like, those guys that smoked a lot of cigarettes in rock bands. Never mind, I would end up in a rock band smoking cigarettes down the road at some point. Myself, that was, it's so funny how life, how life happens like that. But, yeah, I started on the cello when I was nine, and then I switched over to the guitar when I was uh, 14 or 15. My dad brought, bought me a guitar. I feel like he wanted me to play it more than I did at that point. Yeah. It was kind of funny. Because then, by the time I graduated high school, I wanted to play it more than my parents wanted me to play the guitar. It was funny. It sounds like me with my son. I, um, he, he plays drums, and um, <clears throat> I'm really proud of him for it. And, nice. Um, you know, I always try to keep, like, not push him, but, but try to, like... Uh, you know, uh, keep it known that it's a good thing for him, you know? Nice, nice, yeah. nice. Um, what benefits do you find to playing solo rather than playing with a group? Wow, well, so I, I really never played solo up until about a year about a year ago, maybe like a year and a half. I, my first solo show ever was September 30th, 2016. <clears throat> and uh, just played at my uh, local bar in, in Emmaus. <clears throat> on a Friday night for happy hour and it went pretty well like one well one benefit is I don't have to run I don't have to get the approval of the rest of my the rest of the guys in my band we had so much drama over yeah. deciding on what songs to play yeah. <clears throat> I wanted to play hits because everyone knows hits but a lot of my guys the guys in the band with me wanted to play like B-sides and, and mm -hmm. obscure songs and I 
my thing with that was always like, well, if you want to play an obscure song, we might as well just write our own original song because they'll yeah. know it just as well. So, yeah. so, but yeah, and, and less equipment to carry around. I don't have to coordinate schedules. Just, uh, just the, the general efficiencies of being by yourself versus having coordinating with other people. So, and I make a lot more money playing by myself than I ever did in a rock band. I'll tell you that. And um, you said that you talked about um, setting up in your equipment and um, you know bringing your stuff in here and um, setting up. Uh, in our second floor apartment, it didn't take long at all. Absolutely, so, that's funny. I was just, I was actually gonna say that too. Yeah. It's again I mean, with logistics. Within like ten minutes, you less than ten minutes, you were already absolutely you were yeah ready to go. Logistically, I can, I, I can, I can fit in like small spaces. I can play. Yeah. I'm actually, I have an uh, upcoming gig actually at, at, a, at a jewelry store. Nice. So I mean, I would, you rock band would never play in a jewelry store. So yeah, I mean, I, we we couldn't have a full. I mean, obviously a full band in here. You know, but yet we can have you play, you know, and, and sound just as a great. Uh, well, awesome. thank you. Sure. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's great. I love it. It was people. a pleasure to see you play, and I can't wait to see those videos online. So. Sweet, man, definitely. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> do you ever um, miss playing in a group? I do, I do. I, I miss, like, jumping around and rocking out. Like, we used to play, our favorite place to play was the, the Fun House in Bethlehem. Nice. In this, in this local area, the Lehigh yeah. Valley, everyone knows the Fun House. You can still smoke cigarettes and cigars in there. Holy crap. It's smaller than your living room, basically. Wow. <laughs> but it's so fun. Hence the name, of course. But, like, uh, if you put, like, 15 people in there, it looks like you're playing to a packed house. It's great. Yeah. So we had a lot of fun, you know, being loud and jumping around. Like, it's, it's funny because... Uh, even when I was like in my early 20s, I still did not like standing next to a drum set. I never turned my music up loud. I, I, I love rock music, but I don't like blasting rock music. I, maybe I'm oh. just, I just, I just, I'm just like that. But, but yeah, I, I do miss it. I just don't miss the drama, you know. And, and yeah, I can understand that. Everyone has faults and everyone has, has strong points, of course. But, you know, when you're working with other people and especially uh, creating, if you will, art and writing music, yes, you're gonna have. You add that creative aspect, the right brain. As we know, the right brain does is not logical. So the emotions fly, and egos fly when you're writing music with a band. So we had great times, and we had some not so great times. But mm. overall, it was a good experience when I had my band, uh, White Oleander. Mm. So I um, was in a few bands myself, and I can totally um, agree with you about the drama. Like it, we had a we had a jam spot in Allentown, and. Um, Man, like we just thought it was gonna be the best thing, and uh, you know we started playing, and then egos got involved. People were like, "I'm not doing this. I can't." You know, and it just fell apart. And I was like, "Man, what about the music? Like, you got it. Like, that's what we're doing this for." So I could totally understand what you're saying about the uh, about that. Well, yeah. If I, if I could just add, also, it's 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 all another great thing about playing by myself is I can I, I can do it as a second job basically. Yeah. And like. Um, I, but it's something I love. It's not like I'm like you know, washing dishes or doing something that's totally mm. doesn't require a skill set or anything. Not that there's anything wrong with with what we need. We need people to wash the dishes and 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 do those kinds of jobs and stuff. But and uh, but but it's it's great to be able to do art and and you know make a, a you know a little bit of money on the side as well. Oh, of course, yeah. Um. So, what are your goals as a solo performer at this time? Well, my goals is, as a solo performer really are just to entertain whoever is willing to listen, whoever's in the room. I'm not there to be a rock star. I, I'm just, if I set up in the corner of a bar, that's cool. If anyone, if no one claps, that's, that's, that's totally cool too. Uh, you know, people throw tips in the jar, that, that's mm -hmm. awesome. But it's, it's a little bit less pressure than like being a front man in a rock band and, and having to engage the audience. And that awkward feeling, I'm sure you've been in bands, so you, that awkward feeling you get when, when either they don't care or they don't want you there, yeah. but you're still playing your, I mean, hey, I'm still yeah. singing my songs, like, I'm that. still staying yeah. right in front of you, looking at you, but it's like, there's never that awkward feeling when I'm playing by myself, because I'm usually not in the front of the place, it's great. I remember the the first show that I played, it was in Philadelphia, it was a Halloween party, it was a huge party, and um, we were on the stage playing, and um, everybody's just doing their thing. And I'm basically turning to my friend who was playing guitar. I'm like, yo, I was like, we're just playing for ourselves because there's nobody listening to us. <laughs> it's so I weird. Can tell, yeah. Yeah, it's weird. You, you, you have, you, when you're in a band and a rock band, it's probably, you know, we see rock bands on TV and, and we, we have this cultural idea of being a rock star and stuff when, when you're a musician playing <laughs> guitar. But it's like, and then you get on a stage or you get in front of people and it's like, oh man, it's not happening. 
So. Yeah. You know, there's a, there's a play, time and place for everything, I think. Yeah. I would agree with that. Um, what has been your favorite past performance? Oh, well, I have a couple. So, the, my most memorable past performance was actually the same way I played just b before just my cello and, and me singing. I played Basket Case by Green Day, and then I played She by Green Day. If you're a Green Day fan, you, you know what, what song She is. But if you're not, you've heard Basket Case on the radio all the time. I played for this, this fine arts festival at Central Catholic High School when I was nice. a freshman. Yeah. It was like 2000, I think, yeah, it was 2002. It was like probably February or March 2002. And there's, you know, there's regular stuff like, you know, some guys playing guitar, uh, a teacher um, played Stairway to Heaven, and then a, a student sang it. It was really good. It was a good performance. Wow. And, 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 you know, a lot of talent. And, and and stuff. It's it's stuff that you that you kind of expect, like guitar guy singing. And then I brought my cello out, and it, since it was a fine arts festival, I'm sure they thought I was going to play Bach or <laughs> play some classical yeah. music, which yeah. I do play classical music. I love classical music. My, my, actually, I, I love uh, Antonio Vivaldi, the Baroque composer. I listen to awesome. that all. The, yeah. I, that's that's actually my favorite style of music. So so I can and I do play classical music, but I I just sat down, I just started basket case. And, and it, reaction. well, the whole place went super, super silent, and I could tell because there's, there's, you know, there's, there's a part at the beginning of the song where it like stops and it's just guitar by itself, yeah. but then the guitar stops and then the bass plays something I think. So like I didn't do anything. You stop for like a couple seconds and I could hear the, you could hear a pin drop. So I'm like, is this really happening? That's that's the, okay. So I went into it. I finished the song, and the entire I'm not kidding because I'll never forget this. Like, uh, the entire school, uh, at least what I remember, the entire school, that entire auditorium leapt to their feet. And they're all, and, and screaming and cheering and, like, clapping. Like, it was a real concert. Like, I'm, like, I was awestruck because, you know, I do this and it's cool and it's second nature to me because I play the cello and I sing. And I'm able to transpose songs on, that normally are on guitar onto the cello, like, with no problem. So, I guess that, that, I guess that looked impressive to them. And, and so, but I felt like a rock star. I remember that day. I thought, yeah. man, I want to be a rock star. <laughs> that's all I think. I mean, granted, yeah. that, that's everyone that plays music wants to be a rock star. That, that's that's uh, not easily attainable, you know, in the sense of playing arenas and stuff. But that day, I was like, this is, this is my passion. I want to do this for the rest of my life. That was incredible. There were